In this video, we're going to discuss strategies we can use in order to solve radical equations that contain two square roots. So if you look at the example that we see on the screen here, you'll notice that we have two separate square roots. And the easiest thing to do when solving a radical equation that has two square roots is to get the two square roots on different sides of the equations. That way we can see that, you know, if we square both sides of the equation, we can see if we can maybe undo both square roots at the same time. So what we can actually do is we can add the entire square root of 5x minus 8 to each side. And we can rewrite this as the square root of 2x plus 5 is equal to the square root of 5x minus 8. So we can see here that we have a square root on each side. And in order to undo a square root, we need to square each side. So here, now if we take the time to square each side, what's really convenient is that here on the right-hand side of the equation, the squared undoes the square root. So we have 2x plus 5. And here on the right-hand side of the equation, the squared also undoes the square root. So we have 5x minus 8. So you can see here that just by moving that one square root over and squaring both sides, we were able to undo both square roots simultaneously, which is really convenient. Now from here, all we need to do is solve this equation. So we can subtract 2x from each side. We can add 8 to each side. So here we have 13 is equal to 3x. Divide by 3. We end up with x is equal to 13 over 3. Now, remember that we always need to check our answers here, and we need to confirm that these are, in fact, correct, that they do, in fact, work. So what we're going to do is I'm going to give myself a little more space here, and I'm going to actually plug this value into the original equation here and check that it does, in fact, make that true. So we're going to check and make sure that this solution works. So if we take the square root of 2 times 13 over 3 plus 5, and then we subtract the square root of 5 times... 13 over 3 minus 8. We need that to equal 0. So if we start and we take 2 times 13 over 3, if I just use my calculator here, 2 times 13 over 3 is approximately the square root of 8.67 plus 5 minus, we have 5 times 13 over 3 which is 21.67 minus 8. That all needs to equal 0. While 8.67 plus 5 is the square root of 13.67 minus 21.67 minus 8 is also 13.67. So we know that the square root of 13.67 minus itself is going to equal 0. So this does, in fact, work. And our answer here is a true solution. It is not extraneous. So you can see here that if we have two square roots, it's really convenient to get one on each side and square each side to hopefully undo both square roots at the same time. Now if we take a look at this second example here, we can see that we have two square roots in this problem, and they're already set up to have one square root on each side, which is convenient. Now, what's not quite convenient is this addition of this negative 2 here. So we're going to have to see what happens when it's not just two square roots in a problem. It's two square roots and another integer. So we start off by squaring both sides to hopefully undo those two square roots. Now, here on the left-hand side, what I really have is the square root of x plus 6 minus 2 times itself. So it's the square root of x plus 6 minus 2. So that's what's happening here on the left-hand side. On the right-hand side of the equation, the squared undoes the root here, so I'm just left with x minus 2. So that part is pretty convenient. Now, what I need to do from here is I actually need to distribute this out. So here we have the square root of x plus 6 times itself. 
Now remember, the square root of x plus 6 times itself is really like squaring it. So this first multiplication here is going to undo this square root, so it's going to become x plus 6. So that part's pretty convenient. Now this next multiplication here makes this minus 2 square roots of x plus 6. Then this multiplication here gives me minus 2 times the square root of x plus 6. And then negative 2 times negative 2 gives me a positive 4. So squaring on the left-hand side is a little bit messy because we have to use big distribution in order to do this. So we multiply everything in the first parenthesis by everything in the second. So if I start to simplify this out, I see that, okay, I can combine some like terms. So the x has to stay by itself. The 6 and the 4 can be combined together, so I have a plus 10. And then these actually have like square root parts, so I can combine the coefficients together to get minus 4 square root of x plus 6. And that's all equal to x minus 2. So this looks a little messy, and it kind of looks like a lost cause, but believe it or not, it's actually going to be pretty simple to solve from here. So we started by squaring both sides, and while this got a little bit messy, um, we can move forward and actually solve this. So if we take a look at what's left in this problem, the most difficult part of this problem is this square root right here. But we know that in order to undo roots, we need to square. And in order to get that root undone, I need to get the root by itself and then square both sides. So that's exactly what I'm going to do. So I'm going to start off by subtracting 10 from both sides. So as I do that, I have x minus 4 times the square root of x plus 6 equals x minus 12. I then I'm going to subtract x from each side. As I do that, x's are gone, x's are gone. So I'm left with negative 4 square root of x plus 6 is equal to negative 12 because these x's are completely gone. Then I divide by a negative 4 and I end up with the square root of x plus 6 all by itself is equal to 3. So this is looking a lot better because I was able to get that square root that was remaining completely by itself. Now from here I need to square both sides to undo that square root. So as I do that, there's x plus 6 left on the left. On the right-hand side, I have 9. I subtract 6. And I end up with x is equal to 3. So if I have a solution here, and if it works, it's going to be x is equal to 3. So let's actually take a moment here and test this out to ensure that it does, in fact, work in our original equation. So we're going to take this original equation here, make sure it works, and ensure that that value is not extraneous. So here I have the square root of 3 plus 6 and then minus 2 is equal to the square root of 3 minus 2. So this becomes the square root of 9 minus 2 is equal to the square root of 1. The square root of 9 is 3, so 3 minus 2 is equal to the square root of 1. So I get 1 is equal to 1, which is in fact correct. So that means that x equals 3 is a real solution that does in fact work and that it is not extraneous. So in this problem, we can see that even if we have a little bit extra in the problem, we just have to be careful with that big distribution, but we'll still be able to use our knowledge of squaring to undo the square root. We'll just have to do it two different times, once to start, and then once again down here when we got that additional square root by itself.